Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In this video, we are going to see the mystery of Godhead name Yahweh. In 6000 years of human history, we are trying to figure out the mystery of Godhead and His name. In this video, we will see the explanation of His name Yahweh or Jehovah, however you pronounce. In Old Testament, he called his name as I am who I am. But in New Testament, he revealed his name as who is and who was and who is to come. Let's study both names and compare it with Yahweh. Let's hear prayerfully. In our previous video, we discussed Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Today, we will see verse 4 to verse 6. How the John the Revelator revealed Godhead name in these three verses. In the beginning of verse 4, John gives greetings to the seven churches which are in Asia. These were the Roman provinces of Asia Minor, which is western part of modern day Turkey. John greets these seven churches with the name of Godhead or Trinity, we can say. He says, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. To understand this Greek phrase, that is, who is, who was and who is to come, we need to know what is the God's name mentioned in Old Testament. That is Yahweh, we will study detailly. In Old Testament, God's name was mentioned in Hebrew as Yahweh or Yehovah, however you pronounce. In English, it is translated as I am who I am. So these are the words in Hebrew. The word Yahweh is derived from an action verb, Aya, which means to be. So God's name indicates his character. For Bible says, for I am the Lord, which means Yahweh, I do not change. So God is same in eternal past, in eternal present and eternal future. So God's nature is same. That is what his name indicates. Almost 7000 times the word Yahweh is mentioned in Old Testament. If you see in English translation, the Hebrew word Yahweh is translated as capitalized Lord. But Jews thought Yahweh name is sacred. So they didn't want to use God's name in vain. So instead of Yahweh, they started using the word called Adonai, which is translated in English as Lord or Master. Because they thought Yahweh name was sacred. And also the action verb Haya, instead of this word Haya, they started the new word called Ani. So we will see the significance later in the New Testament the, of the word Haya. So let's see God's nature, that is his name Yahweh in Old Testament and New Testament. In the Old Testament Bible says, Before me there was no God found, nor shall there be after me. I even, I am, that is the Lord Yahweh. The word Lord means here Yahweh. And besides me there is no Savior. Here the Bible verse says, Yahweh is our Savior. So let's see some New Testament verses. Here Peter is saying that whoever calls on the name of the Lord, that is Yahweh, shall be saved. Actually he is quoting from the Old Testament prophet Joel. So in the both Old and New Testament, they are pointing to the same Lord and God, that is Yahweh. It talks about his eternal nature and he is our savior. So if you see in the New Testament gospel, Jesus said, I am, that is the word Yahweh. He used the action word Haya. He didn't use the ordinary word called Hani. Instead, he claimed to be Yahweh. So he said, I am the way. He said, Haya. I am the blood. I am the light. I am the gate. So Jesus claims to be Yahweh in New Testament. Further in Revelation, he said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, who was dead, and behold, I am alive for 
for the one more amen so if you see the word i am that is yahweh is linked with this greek phrase john used grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come so here we are seeing a link between the word i am that is yahweh to the greek phrase who is and who was and who is to come so let's study detail the construction of who is who was and who is to come is intentionally awkward in the ancient greek it seems that john searched for the phrase to communicate the old testament idea of yahweh the eternal nature of godhead it has the idea of timeless being and is connected with the name yahweh found in old testament exodus chapter 3 verse 14 when god revealed his name to moses he said i am who i am so in revelation chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 after introducing this phrase john has introduced the three persons in godhead usually when we mention godhead we will begin with god the father then son and holy spirit here the hierarchy was laid down by john and he is starting with holy spirit so after mentioning this phrase he says the seven spirit who are before the throne of god the first person of godhead secondly he introduced the second person that is jesus christ and he gives the three title the faithful witness the first born from the dead the ruler over the king of the earth then he comes to the third person of godhead the holy father god and the father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen so the description him who is who was and who is to come applies to god the son and god the holy spirit as much as it does to god the father in fact the title yahweh describes the triunion god the one god in three person so we are going to see how the yahweh the title who is who was who is to come applies to all this three persons of godhead individually and detailly now let's see the description of holy spirit comparing with the greek phrase from the seven spirit who are before his throne john brought a greeting from god the holy spirit who is described with this title the seven spirit are before the throne speaks to the perfection and completion of the holy spirit john used an old testament description of the holy spirit the idea of seven spirit quoted from old testament isaiah 11 verse 2 here it is a messianic prophecy it gives the characteristics of messiah who is filled with holy spirit these are the seven characteristics listed here it is in that there are seven different spirits of god rather the spirit of the lord has these characteristics and he has them all in fullness and perfection because the number 7 in bible indicates fullness and perfection so messiah was filled with holy holy spirit with these seven characteristics so now let's see how the term who is who was who is to come is compared with holy spirit bible says god is spirit so it applicable to who is and it says in the beginning god created heaven and earth and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the earth who was he was in the beginning creation and bible says and it shall come to pass after that i will pour out my spirit who is to come so this phrase who is who was who is to come is applic- applicable to the god the spirit now let's see how this phrase related to jesus christ john brought a greeting from god the son who is described by who he is and by what he has done jesus is the faithful witness who he is and the first born from the dead who was not only his death he was in the creation all things were created through him without him nothing was made that was made and the thirdly the ruler over the kings of the earth who is to come and rule over the earth so let's discuss this three title detailed 
Jesus is the faithful witness. So this speaks to Jesus' utter reliability and faithfulness to his Father and to his people even unto the death. The ancient Greek word translate witness is also the word for a martyr. So Jesus died for our sin. He is our faithful witness. Secondly, the first born from the death. This speaks to Jesus standing as a preeminent among all beings, that he is first in priority. The first born from the death doesn't mean he is the first person God resurrected and because in Old Testament, if you see many people got resurrected before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then what does it mean the firstborn from the death? The use of firstborn doesn't mean that Jesus had a birth date and is therefore a created being and not God. The ancient rabbis called Yahweh himself the firstborn of the world. Even rabbis also used the firstborn as a messianic title. God said, as I made Jacob your firstborn in Exodus 4.22. So also I will make King Messiah your firstborn when God said of David, I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the king of the earth in Psalms 89.27. Now the phrase the firstborn from the death doesn't mean that Christ was creator. How can he be by him all things were creator? In this sense, the firstborn is not the eldest son. It means the greatest of all, especially distinguished from a certain kind. The Bible also used the word first to indicate origin. Christ is the greatest of those who has died because from his death and resurrection, all salvation has originated. Let's look at the third title, the ruler over the kings of the earth. Jesus is the ruler over the kings of the earth. Before the book of Revelation is over, Jesus will take dominion over every earthly king. At the present time, Jesus rules a kingdom, but it is a kingdom that is not yet of this world. Lastly, John's threefold description. This threefold description gives the landmark of Jesus' plan of salvation. Jesus' perfect life is a perfect witness for us and his death and resurrection, the firstborn from the death, and he is going to come soon again as a ruler over the kings of the earth. So such a lovable God who is our faithful witness, firstborn from the death and the ruler over the kings of the earth, because to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and he made us the king and priest. So this is the second person of God that the lovable God, Jesus Christ. Now let's see how this title Greek phrase is applicable to the God the Father. John brought the greeting from God the Father and he says, God and the Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now we will see how this title is applicable to him. Bible says, yet for us there is one God the Father. There is, so who is? And let's also Bible says for since the creation, he was in the creation also. So who was and behold, one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven, he comes to the ancients of days. This is a title given for the father in Old Testament who is to come. So this title applicable to God the father also who is, who was, who is to come. So this Greek title, John title in Revelation chapter 1 applicable to all the three persons in Godhead. So this title Yahweh that is I am who I am or who is who was is who is to come is mentioned seven times in the book of Revelation. If you see it is mentioned directly six times directly by name who is who was who is to come on the seventh time it is mentioned in a silent way he said he had a name written that no one knew except himself. That is the title who is, who was, who is to come. So how perfect the book of Revelation is written. Six times the word of God, word of the name of the Lord is written directly. On the seventh time it is written in a silent way. Are you worried about your future? 
don't do it because the word yahweh will give you comfortness his right hand will be with you because he will not leave you or forsake you because he said i am who i am he rules the past he rules the present and he will be with you in future amen